Um, evening all, uh, my name is uh, Tony Ellis, I'm Head of IT of the London Borough of Brent. Um, and introduce my colleague Dane Wright, who's been leading on all the work, so I can't claim all the glory and some colleagues back at the ranch. So thanks for that, David. Um, yes, we're just going to take you through um, our experiences and, and maybe set the scene for our background in terms of how we got involved in the project. Um, the things, it is a journey, and I think we always knew it was a journey from the very beginning, and I think we all sat down at the very beginning and none of us knew where it was going to take us, but we, I, I always remember thinking, well, I'm not going to we'll enjoy the journey as we go through it, and, and that's proved to be the case. Um, if you don't know where we are, um, this is where we are, we're up on the top panel left-hand side, so just think of Wembley Stadium. Um, if we're talking about data management, uh, central government will think we've got something like 238,000 people. Um, as of last Friday, we would argue that we've got 284,000. Uh, that's because we've done a lot of work trying to bring some shape and form <coughs> to all the information that we have. And just to set it in the context uh, of a council, because uh, we're, we're attracting a fair bit of press these days, local government, but uh, we run over something like six to 700 services. And if you think about the complexity of a local authority, a London local authority or a unitary, you know, we literally range from the, the social care, the adult care, the child protection, through to housing, benefits. There's a broad range of services, so there's a lot of depth there. As a Southampton fan, I don't tend to go to the stadium that much, I should add as well, but never mind. Um, we have spent uh, a lot of work over the last four years. If you think about all the information that we sit on, and in part, when I meet William and David and Ian, I almost feel slightly guilty because I'm CIO sitting on top of this organisation that has an awful lot of information. But frankly, I don't want all of that information. It's often duplicated, it's often out of date. Uh, and one of the things we want to do is try and streamline that. But also, as a major efficiency driver for us, just bring some shape and form to it. How do we know the latest information about uh, an individual in brain? How do we know at a snapshot, think, given all the services we provide, what services we're providing uh, to that resident? And as I said, the reflection of that work, which led us down the path to talking to the guys at MyDex, is that uh, in 2009, we were fortunate enough to win uh, an award for the work we've done. Now, David sent me this slide. This is the last time I did a presentation to a group. But no, my point here is that um, I would argue, certainly based on my own personal experience, the technology is actually the easy bit. Um, when you start talking about information management, data management, A, at any level, senior or otherwise, that tends to get the reaction because people glaze over. You know, I don't know if you find that, but you, know, you don't want to be trapped in a lift with me on an information management course. You know? But the key thing I would say to you is that we absolutely believe, and I personally believe, that you know, if you look at the public sector and the challenges <coughs> facing the public sector, where there is a deep, rich vein of savings, improved customer service, whatever you want to call it, it's in how do we bring some shape and form to the information that we have. The technology, trust me, is the easy bit. If there's any techies in the room, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think they would argue about that. But the challenge is, how do we know where those nuggets of information are? How do we mine that? How do we use it for the customer's benefit, but equally for the organisational benefit? So you know, information management, data management, for me, is a red-hot topic. And you know, I'm an unashamed evangelist in this area. You know, I really think it's something that the public sector at all levels has got to start looking into. Um, I like having pictures. The other challenge that we have as an organisation, and any council will have it, is how do we start to turn off um, the, const the, the bad source, of the, the out-of-date information. How do we start to choke off where we, we just have inaccurate information? How can we move to a scenario where we're not just collecting everything, but we're collecting the right information at the right time? And it's only the information that we need. So where have we come from on this particular one? Um, obviously, like any public sector organisation, we're looking about how can we change the relationship with our residents? How can we interact with them over, yes, what is a cheaper channel from our perspective, but from their perspective is a more convenient 24 by 7 um, uh, channel. Um, for us, as I've said, uh, it's, a, it's the next step in our data management journey that we've, you know, we've built, we've linked our main systems together, we've tried to get a true picture um, of the customer. Uh, so for us, it was a very easy conversation when William came in and Ian came in. It was a na it, for us, it was the natural step in what we've got. We've brought some shape to what we've got, but the next step is how do we start building a trusted relationship with who's out there? How do I know it's Tony Ellis at Ten Smith Road? Uh, and so it was a natural one for us. But I do stress the point, uh, and I, when we talk about the pilot, we, you know, this is a journey that we're going on. Uh, and it's, it, it, 
we keep discovering new things, we keep pushing, we keep you know, resolving issues and we move on to the next one. And that's been one of the joys of the project. But I've no doubts whatsoever that these firm foundations will enable us to move on uh, as we go through things. Uh, so the solution that fits in uh, to developing our vision. But absolutely, if we can get to the stage where we can start building a trusted relationship with you and Brent, so we can actually know these type of, if you think about the, the depth of information that we store, um, and we can start developing that relationship with you 24 seven, so we can start providing information back to you online, you can start submitting information from us, and you only have to tell us once. Sorry the pun, Lynn, I saw a little bit, sorry about the pun, no, no, Yeah, okay, good phrase, name of the project. But, you know, we can take it in, we have the mechanism, if we get a change of address, we have the mechanism to tell all the parts of the council within 24 hours, and we can start updating all those various back office systems. Works absolutely well for us, great enabler for residents, but, you know, I can't deny there's an efficiency driver here for us. Yes, it's improving the service that the residents will get, but, you know, there's a major efficiency driver. But selling that concept is sometimes difficult. How do you quantify and cost out the cost of poor quality data? It's incredibly difficult. Uh, so this is why it's a bit of a challenge, you know, and I'm in a room with all the people who can see the light, but sometimes as an organisation, not just in Brent, but across the Brent's been very supportive. We've got a uh, really supportive management team and members. But when I go out and talk to other local authorities, sometimes trying to get them to realise the importance of data management is a bit of a struggle. Um, so yes, where we were my next, well, we've done a lot of work with the guys, a lot of work with the technical team, building a platform so we can start to have this online relationship, we can start fleshing out how we know, how, you know, we really do know that uh, it's Tony Ellis and Tensmith Road out there. We can start to trust you. We can start to trust the information that you get. And it's this trust element which is absolutely critical. Because if you think about it, I've got systems. If you go and join the library, you may join the library five years ago. You could have moved four times since you joined the library. There's no need for you to change your address on the library system. You go into Brent, your card still works. So the address on the library system is not going to be the best place I go to to find your latest address. But if you pull in another service for us, where well, you only worked with us last week and you've got a different address, then that system's regularly updated. That tells me that I should go to that particular pot of it, that system, over the library system. So it's how we build this level of trust. Um, yes, um, undeniably, we've consciously, as we build the pilot, kept it very low level, very low risk in terms of the data we will share with our residents. Um, but that's to get the platform working. But again, as we build up that relationship, we can start to populate and exchange increasingly more detailed information. And it is a mutual advantage in terms of having that relationship. I stress the point. It's good for us. Um, it's good for our residents. So, yes, lots of things that we've worked through, and some of you are still working through. David talks about it. William touched on it. The data protection issue, the terms and conditions. Um, it's a completely new mindset because, you know, frankly, we're a local government. A resident will provide information to us. The big local authority will store it all over the place. But this is a completely different relationship. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes you do need to sit back from your day-to-day -day stuff and try and flesh it out. Um, yes, we've done a lot of work in building a technical environment to link through, the, to the, through MyDex. Um, we're into, and uh, we're staying into this phase, what are the lessons learned and what's going to be the future shape. Um, but there's this constant bit about selling the concept <coughs> of uh, authentication of a personal data store uh, back at the ranch and the wider audience. So I'll sum up by saying sometimes when you think about the data management, information management journey, it's a bit like this. You are kind of stumbling through fog. I see some rice smiles from the Telus Once colleagues. It's a very difficult area. <coughs> but I think a platform like Mindex working with us together as a joint business enables us to bring some whole total clarity to the, and, and suddenly as we work through all the hard work that we're working through now, I know it's a bit corny, but it, you know, it kind of feels like that, trust me. Um, we'll work together to create an environment where We've got something that we can build on, I think we could potentially build on quite quickly because we've got over the main hurdles, we've thought through the issues. Uh, and then if you think about all the information we have and the services that are needed, we can move quite quickly. So I'm conscious of time. I hope that made sense. Uh, that's me. Tony, thank you very much.